Welcome to the Holistic Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Keisha Blair, wife, mother of three, author of Holistic Wealth, and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. The show will showcase various experts in the key pillars of holistic wealth. Each week, we deliver the best information on how to become holistically wealthy and live your best life. Today, we have another special solo episode, and it's so great to be sharing this episode with you today as well. I'm excited about that because we're talking about financial survivors' guilt and how to cope with that and how to cope when you've received a large inheritance. I am excited about this topic because I think it's so important with COVID-19 and all that's going on with the economy and with the war and everything that's happening geopolitically. But first, before getting into the topic, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors at the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And the Institute's website is www.instituteonholisticwealth.com. You can visit the website for more information and resources on how you can become holistically wealthy. There are a range of courses there that are available for you. For instance, there is the Certified Holistic Wealth Consultant Program, which is a certification program. That's the signature program of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And in relation to this topic that we're discussing, there are two other certification programs that are highly relevant. There's the Trauma of Money Certification Program and the Holistic Healing Certification Program that are also very relevant to this topic that we're speaking about. And so we just love to acknowledge our sponsors and you can check out the website, as I said. And before I start, I also want to say, because our primary resource for this podcast is the Holistic Wealth book. And as many of you know, the Holistic Wealth expanded and updated edition of the book was released on March 22nd and is now on sale on amazon.com and amazon.ca. And so that's the ebook version is on sale on amazon.com for only 79 cents. Yes, you heard that right. The ebook is now on sale for only 79 cents. So grab it while it lasts, get yours and spread the word. And on amazon.ca, it's available for 99 cents and that's the ebook. So just wanted to put that out there because it's basically going for free and it's a tremendous resource for this topic and so many topics that we've discussed on this podcast. Now, I want to delve into this topic because it's so important. I recently contributed to an article on Mail Magazine on financial survivor guilt and how to cope when you just get this large windfall of money or a large inheritance. And as a behavioral economist, as a trained economist, It's such a very important topic and it's not, you know, I don't find it's one of those topics that we get to talk about a lot. So what is financial survivor guilt? I just want to give just a quick description slash definition of what that is before we go on. So in general, survivor guilt is the experience of emotional distress that can result after having survived a traumatic event, especially when others did not. These feelings can have an adverse effect on behavior, such as reduced motivation and irritability, and when left untreated, can manifest in much more serious and harmful behaviors, including suicide. Given the trauma and tragedy that people have experienced because of COVID around the world, survivor guilt is on the rise. It's increasing a lot around the world. And when we look at what's happening in the economy, I've done several episodes on high inflation, coping with high interest rates. It's, it's actually, you know, uh, increasing as, you know, uh, central banks around the world increase their interest rates to cope with the high inflation. And so we're seeing a lot of prices increase around us. So whether it's the gas prices, right, or the cost of living, food, necessities, those prices are also increasing. And of course, with COVID-19 and what's happening with supply chains and, you know, in the Certified Holistic Wealth Consultant Program, I spoke about that too, with the K-shaped recovery and how the economy is recovering from the pandemic. So you know how certain parts of the economy have started to recover while others have not. 
some industries continue to get worse and some workers are still out of jobs because they've been in industries that have been largely affected. I mean, there's industries that will probably never bounce back the way others have. And so survivor guilt and financial survivor guilt, which is related to the financial aspect of the experience where, you know, you may be feeling financially okay or possibly better off than you were before the pandemic, but some people feel ashamed or guilty for being okay as they witness and empathize with others suffering extreme hardships. And then, of course, there is financial survivor guilt associated with the loss, loss of a loved one, loss of a spouse, and inheriting large sums of money, whether through assets, life insurance policies, and such. And so there's a lot of layers to this and a lot of ways that it can happen. And it's unbelievable the toll that financial survivor guilt can bring. People will feel uncomfortable with the idea of enjoying or spending money for which they've inherited. And it can manifest in unusual spending habits or even emerge as suddenly drastic charitable giving. I've heard of widows, for instance, you know, saying that that life insurance payout that they've received is like blood money to them because it's associated with the loss of that loved one who is so special to you. So it's very important that we are aware of this topic of financial survivor guilt, aware of the symptoms, aware of people around us and whether we're having it ourselves because we can help, we can reach out. For me personally, I have experienced, I know what it is to have experienced survivor guilt. As many of you know, uh, my husband died when I was 31, just eight weeks after I gave birth to my second child. I was just 31 at the time. And we planned well, luckily. Luckily, we did. He was a trained accountant, a certified, a CPA. And I was a trained economist. So we had planned well, much like what everyone tells you to do. And so for me personally, I did experience some amount of survivor guilt. And as I said before, like I recently contributed to an article on Mail Magazine. And as an economist, as the founder of the Institute, I've realized with my training and coaching of women, some of them are financial advisors in the industry. And they've come forward to me and they said, because we read Holistic Wealth, the book, we've realized how many gaps there are in the industry, especially as it relates to women. And we've realized how much your experience is valuable because you were the recipient of a life insurance payout. So you know the process. And you know how that feels. And it's amazing. I have my own financial advisor, so it's, it's critical. And I do say that everyone should have theirs. But some financial advisors have not experienced this, right? And obvious it would happen. I had the experience of, you know, walking through this process at a young age, at only 31. And so I know what the feelings are like. I know the anxiety. And if you're feeling that way today, I know what you're feeling. I'm here to help. Please reach out. It's an amazing thing when you can walk the road with your clients because you have walked it before. And I know exactly how it feels. And it's unbelievable, as I said, how much physical symptoms it can cause from insomnia to loss of appetite to irritability to anxiety, severe stress. It can launch you into a state of money trauma. And that's why I developed the trauma of money course on the Institute on Holistic Wealth, because I realized how intertwined the two were and that we all need to be self-aware and to know how, how to come through this. And so in the article on Mill Magazine, there has been so many discussions on websites like Reddit, on the grief, you know, subreddit and also on the personal finance credit. And I just want to read from that article for you a question that came in. It came in on Reddit, but it was posted in the article. And this is about 
a young woman who received an inheritance. She feels like a fraud for using her dad's inheritance. And I just want to read just a few lines just to give you a gist of what she was saying. So it's entitled, I feel like a fraud for using my dad's inheritance. My dad died in 2016 and my family got the money he left. I wasn't exactly rich, but it was a lot for a 20 year old. It got me through college. I think having the money softened the blow considerably. Sometimes I even felt like it made things okay, which I was ashamed of. I feel like now that I'm basically the last of the inheritance, I'm faced with the real grief of not having a dad or any way for him to help me after this. We had a rocky relationship, but we were starting to get closer before he died. Because I always had money through college, I didn't really get a real job. I just focused on projects that didn't pay, short films, web series, etc. That's what I'm interested in. If he had been alive, he definitely would have made me get a job. So I felt guilty for that. I feel guilty or fake whenever I use the inheritance for anything, food, games, rent. I think it's a big part of why guilt is one of my main emotions. And she goes on to state in the last line, does anyone else feel this way about inheritance? I really appreciate having it. And it has led to so many great things like vacations, programs, and my college degree. But at the same time, it just doesn't feel right. And in another one posted in the article, there's another 20-year-old. I am 21. My father passed away, leaving my sister, age 23, and I with a large inheritance. Please advise. It's been about three months since my father passed away. It was unexpected. My parents had divorced about four years prior to this. And all the inheritance went to my sister and I. I am currently in college, which my father had already set aside a sum of money, enough to cover all my tuition and fees. And so she goes on to state, I know people might think it's absurd to ask for advice when my sister and I inherited this sum of money, but that's exactly why I need advice. I've never had more than 10K in my savings account. And all of a sudden, I'm overwhelmed with what to do with the mass of money. I really miss my dad. And so it's unbelievable. And these two stories just bring home how important this topic is as we go through the pandemic. So many lives have been lost to COVID and to secondary impacts of COVID. And people are wondering how to cope. So there's the grief. And then there's the financial survivor guilt that comes with inheriting whatever pot of funds it is, whether through a life insurance, assets, savings, you name it. And it does help to have the money, of course, but we also have to deal with that guilt and fear. And so many women already feel that lack of confidence with spending their money. And so that's why we have this podcast. And I want to offer up some strategies, not only from my book, Holistic Wealth, but from the various certification programs that I've written. And, you know, my experience with coaching others, I coach many financial advisors. Some of them have become my dear friends and advocates of this holistic wealth message. They're out there training teens. They're out there training giving financial literacy workshops. And as we go through this journey together, know that I'm here to walk this journey with you. And so one of the key strategies that I want to start off with in how to cope with this, now that we've defined it, we've described it, we've walked through a few key studies, is the concept of gratitude. And it's unbelievable that when you're walking through tragedy and grief, it's hard to be grateful for that journey. It's even hard to be grateful for that pot of funds. Remember how I said initially how some widows refer to it as blood money? It's hard to be grateful for that. And so I know that feeling. And I have to say that I felt that way at first too. And I had to come around full circle to realizing that the only way to get through this was through gratitude. And I describe that in my book, Holistic Wealth as well. You know, there's a line in there where I talk about the fact that I had to see my loss as a gift, not the kind of gift that that's wrapped in a shiny, you know, wrapping with a bow 
but that gift that can give me that empowerment that I need and the renewed strength to go on and to also help empower others, which is what we're doing right now. And so start off each day thinking about one thing that you're grateful for, you know, have a gratitude journal or just write it down somewhere. What am I grateful for today? And how does this money empower me? You know, our loved ones planned in advance in order for us to have a softer landing when they pass away. It's the ultimate act of love. And I keep saying it, it's the ultimate act of love for us to plan so that our loved ones can receive that inheritance. So always remember that it was planned. This was something that was thought of. It was an act of love for you. And so that gratitude for that act of love is one of the most impactful things you can do. And write down, so every single day, write down what you're grateful for. Through COVID-19, and if many of you follow me on Instagram, you'll see this Instagram post that I did with a gratitude jar that I made with my kids. And we drop gratitude notes in there from time to time. And so if you want to create that gratitude jar jar for yourself, just grab a jar that's available in your home, make a nice pretty label, print it out in a color that you like and just, you know, paste it on it. Have that gratitude jar somewhere centered prominently in your home. I have it centered prominently in a dining room right now. And it reminds me every day that gratitude jar. And so the Holistic Wealth Expanded and Updated book also has a companion workbook. Feel free to grab that and write it in there. And then use your gratitude jar. Place it prominently somewhere in your home. You can remember that act of love that was left for you and how much that love meant to you and the joy in your heart that it's created and that memory of your loved one. And the other thing that empowered me, and I talk about this a lot on this podcast, is embracing my own personal financial identity. So financial survivor guilt, and I just want to state this before we go on, in terms of, as an economist, I've seen the long-term impacts of financial survivor guilt. And let me just state right now that it can range in the millions of dollars over a lifetime. So the impacts, I'm talking about the financial impacts now, because we spoke about some of the, the physical and mental health impacts ranging from, you know, the milder ones, insomnia, anxiety to suicide as the most severe. And then now I want to talk about the financial impacts. Financial survivor guilt can result in millions of dollars of losses over one's lifetime. And I want to repeat that because I want you to get the financial implications of this and why it's so important. And it can result in millions of dollars of losses for several reasons. Firstly, as you heard in those two case studies that I read earlier, it can be mismanaged. It can be misused. People spend wisely. People spend unwisely. And, and, and so the funds get wasted. The other way is from missed opportunities. So I get from coaching people a lot, you know, I'll just put it somewhere and not look at it. This blood money, I'll just park it somewhere conservative. I'm not even beating inflation. And so I don't want to take any risks with it because I have so much financial survivorship guilt wrapped around it. And so people don't invest it the way they should. And so it results in millions of losses over a lifetime. So it's so multifaceted. And so as we get into the financial implications of this, and this is why this podcast episode is so important. It can result in millions of dollars of losses. And in the trauma of money certification program I developed, I walk course participants through that and some ways to help that. And I just want to say to you today that one of the core things that I tell everyone to do is know your personal financial identity. The Institute on Holistic Wealth has a free quiz. It's a framework that I developed and the quiz, it forms the basis of your personal financial identity, the results. You'll know the results in a couple of minutes. Once you go on the website, you take the free quiz 
And you can learn to harness the strengths of your own personal financial identity and not follow the crowd. And that's the key thing with financial survivorship guilt as it relates to this is because a lot of people get swept away because with guilt and loss, those feelings come with huge emotions. There's anxiety, there's stress, and you feel the need to get out of that in a, in a very fast way. And so it can lead to actions that are not necessarily productive. For instance, overspending, you know, um, getting carried away with the crowd. Some people spend it on luxury vacations. They blow the money on other things, luxury cars, who knows? There's so many things that you can blow your money on today. And so that can result in, you know, just so many other secondary impacts. And so it's good to not get carried away. And if you know your personal financial identity and you know how to harness the strengths and the weaknesses, then you, it will help you uh, deal with financial survivorship guilt. The other way it helps you deal with financial survivorship guilt is it gives you confidence. It gives you confidence of how you spend and how you invest. So if you're a risk taker like I am, so I went through the survivorship guilt, as I said, and I kept wondering. My husband was an accountant. He was a CPA. So you can imagine, even though I'm an economist, right? He was good with record keeping, good with taxes. And I kept wondering, what would he have done in this situation? I wonder how he would have spent it. I wonder what he would have thought if I spent it this way. And you go over and over in circles again. And what does it do? It impacts your confidence. And I had to learn how to regain my confidence after going through this, even as an economist. And so I'm saying this today that you're not alone. We all go through this. And I'm a trained economist and I went through it. <laughs> so that's to tell you how much impact it will have. And so I wrote about it. So in the new and, and expanded version of Holistic Wealth, there's a whole chapter on this. There's a whole chapter there on for personal financial identity. Because for the first edition of the book, many women came back to me and they said, how do we embrace this? So I developed the quiz and it's all there in a framework for you to give you that confidence that you need, right? And so once you learn how to embrace the strengths, to invest, to save wisely and to think, you know what? I can do this. I can embrace my personal financial identity and I can live authentically. And now is the time I'm going to live in that way that I've always wanted to live, being authentic to how my spending philosophy, being authentic to my personal savings philosophy and the values. And you know, in the book, I talk about paying it forward. That's the other thing that I want to talk about. Because when you get this windfall of this inheritance, one of the ways that you can feel like you're giving back and you're, you know, you're helping others is by giving back and supporting the charities and causes that you believe in. So say, for instance, we've had a lot of news lately about gun violence. There's so many charities that you can contribute to that will help children with mental health, that will help. And uh, it's amazing what we can do once we feel empowered. And so those are a few tips that and strategies and of course, if you feel like you need to talk to someone, do reach out. If you're having suicide ideation thoughts, do reach out to a therapist, call the suicide mental health hotline. If you feel like you're bordering on PTSD or financial trauma, do reach out, get help, talk to someone. There are so many resources out there. Financial trauma is also tied to financial survivor guilt, it can cause financial trauma. And that's one of the reasons why I've written about financial trauma so much. And I've spoken about it in, you know, with different experts on this podcast with a holistic psychologist. There's an episode there. There's also several other episodes where I talk about financial trauma. And I did just finish writing a financial trauma certification program so that we can learn how to rewrite our own personal money stories. And the steps that I just gave you outlined before with gratitude, your personal financial identity, 
all these things, learning about your own money values. And the other thing is crafting your personal mission statement as it relates, right, to your money goals. These are the things that can make your life more meaningful and make your legacy more impactful. And so there are also steps that are a part of rewriting your own personal money story, right? And it's so empowering. And I want to challenge everyone listening today, even if you're not going through this, you may know someone who's going through this, right? And once they're dealing with any form of loss in their life, any form of grief, chances are they're going through financial survivor guilt, or even if they've inherited a large sum of money or they've, they've inherited money from the loss of a parent, loss of a spouse, loss of, you know, a family member. And so as we wrap up this podcast episode today, I just want to challenge everyone. And as I said earlier, the key resource for the podcast, this episode is the new and expanded and updated Holistic Wealth 36 Life Lessons to Help You Recover from Disruption, Find Your Life Purpose, and Achieve Financial Freedom. The ebook version for that is on sale for 79 cents right now on Amazon.com. It's also on sale on Amazon Canada. That's Amazon.ca for 99 cents. So it's on Amazon.com for 79 cents, the ebook, and it's available on Amazon.ca for 99 cents. And I just want to challenge you all to take the steps that you need, whatever empowers you, whatever makes you feel that you're thriving, you know, and that's why holistic wealth is so important because it's, it's about the mental, physical, spiritual health and wealth in addition to your financial wellness and know that you can come out of this better on the other side. There are resources, there's help. Email me at info at keishablur.com if you have any questions about this episode, any questions about the book, anything that you've read or the podcast, or if there are topics that you want to dive into deeper and we can walk this journey together. I'm here for you. Thanks for joining me on another episode of the Holistic Wealth Podcast. Thank you for joining us this week on Holistic Wealth with Keisha Blair. Make sure to visit our website, KeishaBlair.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or via RSS, so you will never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes, or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. Are you a member of the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If not... What are you waiting for? Go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to choose your membership plan and join. As a member, you get so many perks. Free worksheets, advice, coaching, and a member's workshop to design an intentionally designed life. You need to figure out your life purpose? Take the Build Your Life Purpose Portfolio Online Self-Paced Course. You're struggling with all your money decisions? Take the Free Financial Identities Course and then take the course. You recently had a breakup, job loss, or experienced the death of a loved one? Take the holistic healing course. You need an overall plan to achieve holistic wealth? We will help you figure out your holistic wealth blueprint. And of course, if you want to start making money by helping others achieve holistic wealth, become a certified holistic wealth consultant. Regardless of what career you've got, the Institute will show you how to increase your income and walk in your purpose. The sooner you join, the sooner you start to achieve a more holistically wealthy lifestyle. And you're going to want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning, best-selling Holistic Wealth 32 Life Lessons to Help You Find Purpose, Prosperity, and Happiness. 